Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to the first service of this year, glorious year, great year, victorious year, 2020, in Jesus' name. And I pray all the declaration for 2020 will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. More strength, more joy, more happiness, more fulfillment, more achievement according to the 2020 vision in Jesus' name. By the way, Happy New Year to everyone. Prosperous New Year to everyone. And glorious year for everyone in Jesus' name. It's going to be great. For me. It's going to be great. For my family. It's going to be great. For my ministry. And for the work of my hand, what are those signs? Breast, fresh, anointed, empowered, ready for 2020. Can I see your hand? Can I anoint that hand from here? It's anointed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this service. Thank you for this glorious hour. Your people have been waiting, looking forward to this covenant service. Here at the headquarters, in all our districts, in all our regions, and all our states in Nigeria, and in all the nations in Africa and beyond, as well as those who are connected with us through the social media. Lord, we're praying everyone in the church, in the houses, anywhere they are, impact every life today in Jesus' name. Anoint their hands. Anoint their lips. Anoint their eyes. Anoint the work of their hand in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray this year, everyone without exception will make progress. Whatever water has passed under the bridge, it's gone. A new day, a new dawn, a new year, a new believer with a new success and victory. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. Now the new and renewed 2020 amen. God bless you. You can see now in your victory. We're looking at Romans chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 12, and we're reading from verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. For I say unto, I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, every man that is among you. God has a message for every man. A promise for everyone. 
a precept for everyone. And he has a prophecy for everyone. It will touch your life, transform your life. It will make you go through this coming, this new year, in power and strength in Jesus' name. To everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has dealt, has given, has apportioned to every man the measure of faith. As we look at this uh, chapter, the first eight chapter verses actually, we're looking at rewardably serving the Lord with new zeal. Serving the Lord, but rewardably, not just serving the Lord. I want to have a reward. You want to have a reward. And we want to have reward of the Lord, rewardably serving the Lord, but not to the old dragging of might, not to the old tired self, but with new seal and with new energy and with new passion, and with new consecration, and with new commitment, new year, new zeal. New year, new passion. New year, new commitment. That year, that amen looks like the old amen. New year, a new passion, a new commitment, a new consecration in Jesus' name. Whatever we are, Whatever we do, in whatever area, whatever style of ministry, he wants us to minister to him with zeal, with passion, with excitement, with consecration, and with joy and excitement. Look at Numbers chapter 25. Numbers 25. I'm reading from verse 10. Numbers 25, reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, And the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. While he was zealous for my sake among them. You know what God is looking for? That as we look at members of the congregation, and as we look at various congregations and communities, and he wants us to serve with zeal, a kind of zeal that turns away the wrath of God, the anger of God, the judgment of God away from people. So as you want to serve this year, and you want the Lord to reward that service, you come with zeal. And you have one zeal directed and pointed in one direction. Anyone that has the wrath of God upon him, any family that has the wrath of God upon her, any community having the wrath of God upon the people there, I'm going to minister to them, maybe in evangelism, maybe in crusade, maybe in soul winning, maybe in prayer retreat, maybe in singing, maybe in anything. I want to minister to them to take the wrath of God for them. And I want to do that with zeal. I want to do that with passion. That's what God is looking at. And because of that, you'll be rewarded. Somebody there said you'll be rewarded. Look at verse 12. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him the covenant of peace. Because of that zeal, because of that passion, because of that consecration, because of that commitment, because of the purpose of heart to turn away the wrath of God from the sinner, a sinful family. A sinful community because he offers that service with zeal, 
with all his heart, I'm going to give him the covenant of peace. We're looking at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. Even so ye, for as much as ye as zealous or spiritual gifts, whenever you come to the church, or maybe you are your own house, and you're seeking the Lord, I want my gift to be sharpened. I want my gift to to be heightened. I want my gift to be better, to enrich life, people's lives better. Because of that, I'm zealous of wanting to have relevant, important gifts to minister to people. I'll do it that with zeal. I'll not pray sleeping. I'll not pray dozing. I'll not seek the Lord and just superficially. I come this year that while I'm seeking the Lord, it's with zeal. I'm praying to the Lord, it's with zeal. I am giving something to the church, it's with zeal. I'm doing personal evangelism, it is with zeal. It says in verse 12, even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous, of spiritual gifts seek that she may excel to the edifying of the church. See that she will excel. See that she will shine to the edifying of the church. The reason he wants us to have gifts and to seek them and to possess them and to manifest them and to minister with them was zeal is so that we will edify the church of God. The whole church, the whole church will edify the ministers, will edify the members, will edify the visitors, will edify everyone that comes to be with us in the service that they will say, I didn't know that there's so much edification. There's so much feeling, there's so much joy, there's so much happiness in the midst of the people of God. You offer whatever it is you are offering to the edification, the upliftment of the church, of the whole church. That's what we will do. I said that is what we will do. Titus, I'm reading from chapter 2. Titus, chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from how many iniquities? All iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people. Tell me zealous of good works. The Lord is watching your life and the Lord is watching your ministry. He's watching your output. He died on the cross for you and he has shed his blood to save you and to sanctify you, to purify you. And the purifying of the blood of Jesus is to make us not ordinary, not so-so Christian, not wishy-washy Christian, not sluggish Christian, not depressed Christians, peculiar, peculiar, peculiar people. And he's watching you. And if you are offering something to the Lord, and you're offering something to the church, and you're offering something to your neighbor, and you're offering something to maybe a member of the church, maybe a family in the church, and maybe a visitor in the church, and you're doing it sluggishly, and you're doing it half-heartedly, and you're doing it so dull that there is no life in it, is saying, but I washed you with my blood, but I redeemed you with my blood, but I purified you with my blood to make you peculiar and to make you zealous of good works. We're going to be zealous. 
I am going to be zealous. I said, I am going to be zealous. I will not respond to the sacrifice of Christ and to the great thing Christ has done for me. Respond back to him in a sluggish way that when people see me always tired, morning waking up, always tired, evening coming to Bible study, always tired, and during the week, you know, doing something, and he's always trying to carry himself, the load of the world appears to be upon his shoulders. I will not be like that. I said I will not be like that. He wants us to serve the Lord, and he wants us to be so committed that we'll be peculiarly zealous of good works. He will reward you. It will reward me. Nothing will take your reward away. And nothing will minimize my reward in Jesus' name. Nobody can take your reward away if you don't let him. Nobody can take your reward away if you don't let her. Nobody will take your reward away. New Year, Amen. You seem to be forgetting yourself that this is 2020. This is no more 1992. This one, this year, will be peculiar. Yeah. This year will be different. Yeah. And as we offer our service to the Lord with joy, with happiness, yeah. with excitement, yeah. with strength, yeah. with skill, Everything we know we bring into the service of God will be zealous for the Lord. Colossians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 12. Colossians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring. How often are you going to labor? I said, How often are you going to labor? Always laboring, what's the next word there? Fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God for I bear him record. I watch him, I see him, I examine him, I supervise him, I bear him record, I see him going to minister, I see him praying, I see him exercising his gifts, I see him uplifting the people, edifying the people, and I can bear record about this minister, I bear him record that he has a great zeal for you. I pray heaven will bear record concerning me, that I have great zeal for the people of God to edify, to, uh, to preach, to pray, and to lift up, and to improve the condition, every area of condition, for the people of God, I will be so, you will be so, we will be so, rewardably serving the Lord with new zeal. Come back now to Romans. I'm reading from chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present, nobody is going to present your body, your gift for you. You will present, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. What's he telling us? If you are not presenting your body to the Lord as a living sacrifice, it's a reasonable service. If that body is not holy, the service is unreasonable. It is not acceptable. But when you present to the Lord, and there is no blemish, and there is no sin, and there is no secret iniquity, then it becomes reasonable service and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by renew by the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
I say, through the grace given unto me, I say, through the grace given unto me, the, the Apostle Paul is saying, I never say anything except through grace. I'm going to allow every word I speak, every message I preach, every counseling I give, every advice I give, any word I give to pass through the gate of grace before it gets to the people. It says, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to preach any message without allowing that, that message to pass through the grace of God. You know, if you will make up your mind in this new year that everything you say, everything you utter, everything you bring out, every counseling you give, every message, every teaching you give must pass through the gate of grace in, in getting to the people. The Lord will reward you this year. And he says to everyone that is among you, he says, I am ministering to everyone. And you know, uh, there are people, they minister well, but they have a section in mind of the congregation that they minister well to, and then they have another side of the congregation. I don't like them. Pastor, you don't have the luxury of saying you don't like one solitary member of the church. You don't have the luxury of saying I don't like two people, three people, ten people, thirty people, three hundred people, a section of the church. You preach and you minister and you counsel and you direct the message to benefit and profit everyone before you this morning everyone here will be blessed not to think of himself now more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as god has dealt to every man the measure of faith i have faith i said i have faith he has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And so you cannot say, that's my problem. I don't have faith. He gave that to every man. You are saved, that's by faith. You are sanctified, that's by faith. And you are living and walking in the way of righteousness. We walk by faith. Thank God you have faith. Thank God I have faith. I said, I have faith. You have faith. I have faith. When I join my faith to your own faith, you will fly. You will soar. In verse 4, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of another members one of another members one of another what does that mean when you cut yourself away from the other member they're not complete again because the lord has so positioned us that we're members one of another having then gives differing according to the grace that is given to us whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on a ministering. Or he that teaches on teaching. Or he that exhorts on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that rules with diligence. He that shows mercy with cheerfulness. Well, look at the message today, rewardably serving the Lord with new zeal. Three things we're looking at. Number one, conforming to outright purity for a realizable crossover. Crossing over to this new year and crossing over 
to the immediate blessings of God and crossing over to the highest blessing we ever had. How do we do that? Verses 1 and 2 tell us, conforming to outright purity. Why? For a realizable crossover. Number two, crucifying the old pride in recurring crisis. You see, in the believer's life, there are things that will come your way. There are stumbling blocks that Satan be put in your way. You are on to service. And you are moving forward and you are making progress. I'm talking to somebody. You'll make progress. What's the person I'm talking to? Progress before you in Jesus' name. And the devil is not so happy. He's wondering, why is he so happy? Why is that believer so excited? Because it's a new year. Why is he so much on top of the world? Because he got, okay, let me talk about myself. Because I got 2020 promise. I got 2020 prophecy. I got 2020 progress. And I'm so excited. I am still alive in this year 2020. I'm the only one excited in the house. I said I'm the only one excited in the house. You are excited also, but because Satan looks at it and he says, Why is he so happy? Why is he so joyful? And then he puts a stumbling block in your way. Open your eyes. There's a path around that stumbling block. Are you hitting your leg on the stumbling block? Turn around and go that way. And there's even another pathway around that stumbling block. Let him put his stumbling block there. You are not going to hit your leg, hit your foot on that stumbling block. You are moving forward. The joy that you got before that stumbling block, you still have that joy. And then Satan looks at you and he puts another stumbling block and then your eyes are open. My eyes are open. And you see it again. You don't stumble. This year you will not stumble. You have crucified the old lifestyle. The old you. Always stumbling. Always stumbling. And then you pass around. And Satan says, leave him alone. There's no use disturbing that man. There's no use disturbing that woman. He will leave you alone. Point number two, crucifying the old pride in recurring crisis. Point number three now, consecrating our overall profitability. I am profitable. Anybody there? I am profitable. To my family, I will be profitable. To my neighbors, I'll be profitable. To those who are down, I will lift them up. I will be profitable. And then to those who are weak, to those who are crying, to those who are sorrowful, I will be profitable. And to the church and to you, I commit my life to God, I'll be profitable to you. Whoever you are, whoever you are, I'll be profitable to you. When you are crying, I'll not say, why are you crying? That's a chance for me to do good to somebody. I'll be the one to wipe away your tears. Consecrating our overall profitability for the returning Christ. For the returning Christ. That's what you have. The gifts you have. The possibilities you have. The skill you have, the service you have, you will be profitable to every member of the church on behalf of Christ for the returning of Christ. Point number one, conforming to outright purity for a realizable crossover. We're looking at chapter 12 again. 
verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, present your bodies, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You are going to present that mind also to the Lord, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Look at that, number one, present your body unto the Lord. Why? First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body, your body, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Your body does not belong to you to do as you please, to smoke whatever you want, to drink whatever you want, or to use drugs to excite your body or to make you go high. It says your body is not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Number one, you present your body unto the Lord. Not only that, you present your heart unto the Lord, presenting your body and then holding back your heart that will not deal. We're looking at Psalm 24. Psalm 24, we're reading from verses 3 and 4. From verses 3 and 4, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. He wants your heart pure. He wants your heart holy. And now he wants you to give that heart unto him. Purified heart. Holy heart. That you give that to him so that he will be on the throne of your life, of your heart. Look at what it says. It says in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, My son, give me thine heart. It says present that to you. You present your body and you present your heart. You also present your mind. Your mind. Because he wants your mind to only think of him. He wants your mind to only have affection for him. And he wants that mind to be pure. And he wants that mind to be presented unto him. You cannot come to God and you are mindless. And you are not mindful. And you don't have in your mind the mind of satisfying the Lord. Having the very mind of Christ. The very mind of Christ. That's what he wants. So that totally, completely, Without reservation, you are serving the Lord. And you know, sometimes there are people who try to do something. That thing, they've been doing it mechanically many years. And so, their mind is not there anymore. They're not putting their mind. They're not looking at it with their eyes. And they're not examining everything. They just serve, they just serve, they just serve. And they just, you know, do that mechanical thing without the mind. You must bring your mind renewed unto the Lord. So that anything you do, and everything you do, you do it with all your mind, all your strength, and all your soul. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. In lowliness of mind. That's what God is looking for. That as you come to the Lord and you want Him to fulfill the 2020 prophecy in your life, 
It says you come to him conforming to outright purity for a realizable crossover. That you come with lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Others are ministering. You are ministering. Others are sharing. You are sharing. Others are defying the church. You are defying the church. Others are preaching. You are preaching. Others are praying. You are praying. Look at other people. Don't let your preaching hinder another person's preaching. Don't let your action hinder another person's action. Don't let your giving hinder another person's giving. You esteem the other better than yourself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse 5, let this mind be you which was also in Christ Jesus. That's the mind renewed, refreshed, revived, a mind that is focused on Christ. That's what you present unto the Lord. Not only that, you present your hands because this is your body. And therefore you have to present your hand unto the Lord. Because your hands also, your hands are very important. And it is the hand that is pure, the hand that is cleansed, the hand that is clean, you can present unto the Lord. And when you present, you're serving the bread of life. You're serving the spiritual food. And as you serve, you serve with a clean hand. You'll not serve the Lord, serve the church, serve the people of God with a defiled hand this year in Jesus' name. 2020, amen. In Isaiah chapter 33, Isaiah chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 14. Look at this. The sinners in Zion, watch. I thought Zion is a holy place and the headquarters of Israel, of the people of God. I thought Zion is where God had put his glory and he has put his power and he has put his majesty. There shouldn't be any sinners in Zion. In our Zion here, there will be no sinners. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has surprised the hypocrites who among us shall dwell with devouring fire, who among us shall dwell with everlasting bodies. Look at verse 15 now. It says, none of us here will dwell in everlasting bodies. Eternal suffering, everlasting fire in hell, I'm not going there. I'm not going to be there. You will not find even my shadow in that everlasting hell. The totality of me will be in heaven. God confirm it for you in Jesus' name. Look, look, at, look at verse 15. He that walketh uprightly and speaketh uprightly, he that despises the gain of oppression, he that shaketh his hands from holding bribes. You will not even take bribe. That's the kind of hands in the body you can present unto the Lord that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He that dwell, he shall dwell on high. It's talking about me. I said it's talking about me. You will dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of the rocks. Bread shall be given him. No famine in your life this year. His waters shall be sure. Thine eye shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. 
I'll be there. I said, I will be there. Your body, you present unto the Lord. Now you present your feet unto the Lord. You consecrate your feet unto the Lord. These feet will not go anywhere that will bring defilement to my body. These feet will not visit any house that will bring my defilement to my heart. These feet will not go into a theater or into the holy world they show or into any kind of place they are showing this cinema and that cinema and then my feet carry me to that place and I'm defiled, God forbid. In your life, God forbid all that. Your feet will remain pure and clean and you walk in the way of righteousness all through this year and for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. In Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, and I'm reading here from verse 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What away from thee, a proud mouth, but and perverse leaves put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on. Don't look at objects on the side of the road, advertising themselves, inviting people to evil, and they have something written on their, on their dress. I'm available for whoever. Don't look at them. I will not look at them. Let thine eyes look straight on. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. This year, don't just get up and I'm going there, I'm going there. Have you pondered? Have you thought? Have you prayed? Are you led by the Spirit of God? Don't just roam about. Don't just go about. Satan and his cohorts are waiting at every corner. And if you always push yourself, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, be careful. I pray this year you will not get into the hands of those who waste people's lives. Your life will not be wasted. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established, turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. Amen. And then he wants us to presage our ears unto the Lord. Because you see, when, when the Bible says, Presage your bodies unto God, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He wants every part of that body totally, completely, unreservedly presented unto the Lord. Matthew, Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 27. Matthew chapter 10, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the house tops. Somebody says, Brother, come. I want to tell you something. I want to show you something. Have you heard? You ask, before you tell me, what you are telling me, can I publicize it on house tops? He says, no, this one is secret. Don't tell me. I want to talk about brother so-and-so. I want to talk about sister so-and-so. This is only for your own personal, private consumption. What you tell me, can I tell that brother, that sister, on the housetops? Can I broadcast it, proclaim it everywhere? Uh-uh, no. Don't let them know that I'm the one that told you. Don't tell me. Look at this, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak in light, 
and what you hear in the ear. Anything you are going to hear, anything somebody is going to drop through your ears into your mind, it's something you can proclaim, it's something you can preach, it's something you can publicize upon the house tops. And anybody who wants to tell me anything, and I cannot call brother so and so and say, Come, say that same thing you said in his absence, say it now. And uh, actually, uh -uh, don't stand up. Tell him. You didn't stand up when you were telling me. Tell him. If they cannot do that, don't give them attention. Don't give them your ear. Your ear is dedicated unto the word of the Lord this year in Jesus' name. Look at Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 1. In Habakkuk chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 13. Habakkuk chapter 1. We're reading from verse 13. I pray God will help us to understand this message and to receive this message. Not just to, you know, we're just here, new year message, and then we go on. What did you hear? Well, it was good. I said, what did you hear? It was, it was exciting. What is it? Tell me exactly what you had. You know, now it's a pastor that preached and he was so excited. He was waving his hand like this and he was reading, uh, you know, so many parts of the Bible. Actually, I've forgotten. This one, you will not forget. I said this one, you will not forget. At back of chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 13. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. He's spoken about God, but you are a child of God. And since you are a child of God, you tell yourself, my eyes will not look at pollution. My eyes will not look at crime. My eyes will not look at criminals fighting, killing themselves. And then I'm standing there on the side of the road. Your purer eyes than to behold iniquity. You will not gaze on iniquity. And thou canst not look on iniquity. Look, somebody is stabbing another fellow. Maybe on the net, they show the picture. You're looking for something else and the thing popped up. And then you say, look at these people. Why are you looking at that? The creature of God, a creature of God is being stabbed, is being violently handled, is being killed, and if that fellow is not born again, is going to hell, and you're looking at that, and you're watching. Why are you watching? This year, your purer eyes than to behold iniquity, and you will not look on crime, on bloodshed. You will not look on things that destroy other people's lives in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. And I'm reading from verse 8. Proverbs chapter 31. And we're reading from verse 8. In verse 8, this is your mouth. It's not enough that my mouth does not speak evil. This mouth, look at it. Verse 8. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as appointed to destruction. People are having conspiracy and they are planning. They say that man will bring him down. That woman will bring him down. You find people, you know people that are conspiring together. And you are there and you are hearing everything they are saying. The Lord is saying that this year... Your mouth, your lips, your tongue will be committed to protecting and to preserving the people who are drawn, who are appointed to destruction. You will not keep quiet. You will not close your mouth. When there are conspirators, 
wanting to destroy other people's lives, you present your mouth unto God. Your mouth will be for the defense of those who cannot defend themselves in Jesus' name. In the district, in the zone, in the community, you find that there are some people that are saying that person is so and so's favorite, is so and so's favorite. We're going to make sure that all that galloping and running and climbing and getting here, getting there will stop him. And you are there. Why don't you open your mouth and say, What why are you going to do that? Is that your assignment for the new year? You will open your mouth. Look at verse 9. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, plead the cause of the poor and the needy. The Lord will be with you. That's the zeal the Lord is expecting that this year we will manifest. And as we manifest that, the glory of God will be upon your life. The progress that God has promised will be for you in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 3. We're looking at First Peter now, chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 10. First Peter chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, For he that will love life. I love life. I said I love life. Happy life, fruitful life, useful life, profitable life, sanctified life. I love it. Do you love that too? For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil, shun evil. Detest evil, flee from evil, and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it, ensure it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. I will not do evil. We're coming back to Romans. We're looking at Romans chapter 6 now. Romans chapter 6, he wants all our members, whichever one we have not mentioned, all the members of our body to be pure and to be holy, to be preserved and conserved, and to be presented unto the Lord. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, you're going to present that body to the Lord. Make sure it's free from sin. Let not sin reign in your mortal body. That ye should obey each of the laws thereof. Neither yield ye your members, members of your body. All the members who have mentioned and the members who have not mentioned, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members, and your members, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Amen. Look at verse 18. Being then be free from sin. Ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness that's a practice for this year that's a commitment for this year that's a consecration for this year conforming to outright purity for a realizable crossover point number two now crucifying the old pride 
a recurring crisis. Recurring crisis. You know, situation happens in life when the flesh will have the chance to raise up its ugly head. This year, we'll put it down. Pride, the old pride, will not have any way in any of us in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 3. Romans chapter 12, we're looking at verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, every man, men of position, women of position, men of authority, women of authority, people that feel that the word of God might be given to that, given to that, but me, I'm above it. Nobody is above the word of God anytime, especially this year. Nobody is above the word of God. He says to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. That's pride. Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. He wants us to crucify the old pride. The old pride. Why? Because as you look at Proverbs chapter 16, Proverbs chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 16, reading from verse 18. It says, pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. That's why it says, crucify that old pride. Don't let it make you fall. You will not fall. Better is it, in verse um, 19, better is it to be of the humble spirit with the lowly, than to divide the spoil with the proud. Don't be in the company of the proud. Don't be in association with the proud. Don't be in fellowship with the proud. Don't even stay near them so that you don't learn their attitude. You don't learn their utterance. You don't learn their action because pride will bring downfall. You will not have downfall. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 25, verse 27. Proverbs 25, 27. It is not good to eat much honey. It is not good to eat much honey. So, for men to search their own glory is not glory. You understand the first part? It's not good to take much sugar. It's not good to take much honey. It's not good to take something sweet and take too much of it every day because it will bring, it will go into your blood and it will give you sugar diabetes. And diabetes is terrible. And so, much sugar, cut it up. Much honey, cut it up. It says, that's a little thing. For men to search out their own glory. That's not glory. You know, glorifying themselves, publicizing themselves, talking about themselves, talking about their tribe, talking about their home, talking about this and talking about that, and flattering themselves. It will give you spiritual diabetes. And spiritual diabetes will make you to be flushing out of your body all the nutrients, everything you have learned. Because exalting yourself and because uplifting yourself and seeking your own glory every time, now you have a deadly spiritual diabetes. That thing can kill. And so... If you are always, you know, always talking about yourself, always talking about yourself, look at what I have, look at what I've done, look at what I can do. This year, let's be quiet. I said this year, let's be quiet. 
What's the outcome of pride? Let me show you a few. We're looking at Second Samuel chapter 17. Second Samuel chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 23. Second Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. Look at verse 23. It says concerning Achisophel. And when Achisophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass and arose and got him home to his house, to his city, and put his house in order, and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulchre of his father. Achisophel was a wise man, wise in political matters. And he gave an advice to Absalom. And then another person said, the advice of Achisophel is not good at this time. And so they listened to another person. And did, they did what another person said. And the pride and Achisophel, I said, this is what you do. And they didn't follow that. He was so proud that because they didn't do what he said, he committed suicide and went to hell. We've read of people that have wasted their lives. In our family, I said this, and that their mommy did not accept that. They write a note. They say, okay, if my words are not acceptable, why am I living? And they die. And you can guess where they went. Don't allow pride to make you think that you are the only wise person there and you know what you do. And if they are not taking your word, eventually you think the best is to kill yourself. You will not die prematurely. You will not die a death death in Jesus' name. Oh, you know, sometimes you are even the pastor and you're a leader. And uh, because you want something, you know that's the right thing to do. And the people are not ready for that thing. And they say, no, I'm not going to do that. They may not say it uh, with their mouth. They may say it with their action. And then the pastor will go and kill himself spiritually. And say, okay, if it is like that, I will not pray anymore. I will not preach anymore. And he dies spiritually. You will not die a Heath of Hill's death in Jesus' name. If you tell them, if you show them, and they're not ready yet. Maybe they'll be ready next week. Maybe they'll be ready next month. But don't die today. You'll still be alive when they will do that thing and obey the word of God in Jesus' name. I will not die. I mean, premature death, I will not die. Spiritual death, I will not die. The death of the proud, I will not die the death of the proud. New Year, talk, talk, talk. You will not die the death of the proud in Jesus' name. Look at Second Chronicles chapter 26. Second Chronicles chapter 26. I'm reading from verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Pride brings destruction. And he transgressed against the Lord his God. And he went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah, the priest, went in after him, after Uzziah, and was him for score, eighty priests of the Lord that were valiant men, were the valiant men for the truth, this year in Jesus' name. And they was Jude Uzziah, the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but 
to the priest of to the priest the sons of Aaron that are consecrated to burn incense go out of the sanctuary for thou hast trespassed neither shall leech be for thine honor from the Lord God then Uzziah was wroth Uzziah was angry he was a king he had enough to do as a king he left his responsibility at it. as a king his heart was lifted up and he was going to make sacrifice he was going to burn incense and the valiant priests will be valiant i said we will be valiant and you know people they have become so weak in their mind, so weak in their backbone. If they see an Uzziah trying to do something in the house of God, which they shouldn't do, they turn away their faces from there. Because I don't want to burn my fingers. I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to correct anybody, challenge anybody. That's not zeal. That's compromise. You will do what the Lord has called you to do. A pastor in the local church, a pastor in the district church, a leader in the region, a leader in the state, a leader in the nation. Some people think now because they are rich, because they are high, because they are professors, because they are highly educated, because they have attained this political position in society, they think that now they should take over from the pastor and do whatever they want. And those pastors themselves, they're not as brilliant as these priests. They stay back. They step back. They cannot do anything. And the whole church now is in the hand of proud Uzziah. It will not be so. I said it will not be so in your local church. It will not be so in Jesus' name. Let somebody have the courage to tell Uzziah that whatever you have, whatever you know, whatever your position in society, it appertains not unto you to double and to get into the sanctuary. But Uzziah was angry. You know, there are people who are afraid of Uzziah being angry. They say, you know, that man, if I challenge him, and if I try to put him right, and I said it does not appertain to you to do this, he'll be angry. And I don't want to face his wrath. Why? Why are you afraid of him? Let him be angry. We will stand. In verse 19, then Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was angry, wroth was the priest, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord. Ah, instead of getting healing in the house of God, he got sickness. Instead of having cleansing and cleanliness, he got leprosy. Instead of being acceptable, he became rejected but from beside the altar, the incense altar. And Azariah, the chief priest, all, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and he thrust him out from this. Yea, himself his stage also to go out because the Lord has smitten him. I pray God will not smite you. Pride is costly and this year we will crucify every form of pride in every heart in Jesus name. And Uzziah was a leper until the day of his death 
and dwelt in a several separate house, being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jothan, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. No leprosy will come on me. I said, no leprosy will come on me. No leprosy on my soul. No leprosy in my spirit. No leprosy on my tongue. No leprosy in my eyeballs. No leprosy on my skin. Do a word with pride. Crucify the old pride in recurring crisis. Point number three now. Consecrating the overall, our overall profitability for the returning Christ. Christ is coming again. Somebody there is said, Christ is coming again. And when Christ comes, he'll find you ready. He'll find me ready. He'll find you watchful. He'll find me watchful. Look at Luke. In Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, I'm reading here to you from verse 35. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Let your loins be gathered about, and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. When you will return from the wedding. It's talking about Christ returning. He's coming back again. That when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, he shall, that he shall guide him, God himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. He will feed you. He will serve you. He will bless you. He's gone to heaven. He's coming back again. And he wants us to become profitable and to consecrate the totality of our profitability unto the Lord, so that when he comes, we will not miss our reward. We're looking at Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable, because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear, he said, Therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return, and to return, and to return. And to return. The Lord is coming again. He is coming again. And that's the reason why you want to consecrate your overall profitability for the returning Christ. And to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, What's he saying to you? What has he said to you? You think about the way you spent the past years. Were you really occupied in preaching? Were you occupied in edifying the church? Were you edified in winning converts? Were you, edi were you, were you occupied, rather, in winning converts? Were you occupied in making those converts stay and abide? Were you occupied in uh, being profitable to the church, profitable to the saints, and profitable to sinners? 
Were you profitable in getting sinners converted and getting saints established in the faith? Verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. He wants us to be a prophet. I will be a prophet. You know, there are some people who say they are members of the church, even ministers in the church, even workers in the church, and instead of adding, adding, adding to the church, that's profit, adding to the church, they are taking away from the church. You know, people come to church, all of us, in a way, we minister. Before the preacher comes on, we meet the ushers. And there are ushers who are excited about their work. They have a smile on their face. And they have good words in their mouth. And the person who just came to church, having that kind, that kind of usher says, I'd like to come here again. They respect people. They love people. They treat people gently. There are people that come to the church, and then there is not the preacher they meet first. They meet the security, and the security, they say, are you coming for the first time? You don't know your whereabouts. Here is the door, and this and that. And they make sure that that fellow feels at ease in being in the church. That's being profitable to the church. There are people that, you know, during the um, singing of a congressional song, they play and they sing with all their hearts. I remember that, um, you know, some time ago, some years ago, some Americans attended the church at Bagada. Not this one, Bagada. At the old Bagada. You remember the old Bagada? How many of you remember? You know, I remember too. You know, I was uh, standing there, and then I saw them on the bench there, Americans, white Americans, and we were singing grace, grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. Grace, grace, grace that is greater than all our sins. GHS number 129. And as we were singing, one of them shedding tears of repentance, tears of repentance. And that song, the way the congregation sang, and the way the orchestra played, and the way the lead singer sang, touched her heart, and she, she knew she came to worship. After the service, I interacted with them. They enjoyed the service. If they were leaving here, they would like to come back. That's being profitable in the church. Many years ago, uh, the choir was singing, Salvation is Free. And they sang, and so sang that song, everybody heard the words. The diction was very clear. And then, as it penetrated the heart of somebody there, it been postponing salvation, postponing salvation. And when that beautiful choir sang, Salvation is Free, that fellow fell on her knees. We have not even started praying. We have not started making any altar call. And that fellow, before the choir finished, he had the peace of God, the salvation in her soul. The choir was profitable unto God. And our choir is still profitable. I said our choir is still profitable. More profit this year in Jesus' name. Anything we're doing, we're ushering, we're leading us fellowship, we're doing security, and you make security and safety the very rule of your life. And it's like you're conscious of that every time, not to hinder people. Not to make people afraid, not to pound some people, not to be so strong. You see, that's a militant church. Looks like all the people, they are soldiers. And uh, you, know, you couldn't raise your hand, you couldn't put your leg, you couldn't put anything there. And they're so afraid to come back. You'll not make anybody afraid. Come into the house of God in Jesus' name. We will be profitable in Jesus' name. 
and then the preachers preaching the word and showing us the way of salvation and showing us the way of sanctification holiness showing us the way to heaven all of us will be profitable in jesus name i say chapter 48 i say chapter 48 and I'm reading from verse 17. Um, the says, the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit. I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit. You come to the house of God, and you're a worker, you're a leader, you're a minister, you're whatever you're doing, the Lord will teach you to profit which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Oh, that they had hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. You didn't say amen to that one. In verse 19, thy seed also had been as the sand and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof his name should not have been cut off your name will not be cut off the names of your children will not be cut off not destroyed from before me he will teach us he will teach you to profit you'll be profitable I come back, come, come to Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. We're looking at chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Somebody help me shout 2020. Look at 2020 here now. Acts chapter 20, verse 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. Anytime you minister, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. Anytime you counsel, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. Anytime you sing, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. Anytime you pray for people, I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. You see, there are people, they're not looking at the sickness of the sick. They're looking at the time. I have only five minutes. And because of the five minutes, you know, you cannot treat people in a hurry like that. You need to, you know, talk to them. You need to. They are afraid of oppression. They are afraid of the theater. They are afraid of somebody making them go to sleep, go to sleep, and then cutting their body. They are afraid. They have had this story, this story, and that story. And so you, you cannot say, well, come on, lie down. I need to slash you. I need to remove this. I need to, you know, sew you back. I don't have much time. You must have the time. If you're in a hurry, you're not going to treat anyone. You're not, you're going to keep back what is profitable unto them. That's why as we come and the Holy Ghost wants to operate your life, wants to operate your heart, wants to operate your spirit and your soul, we will not be in a hurry. Amen. Because Paul the Apostle said, how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. But I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. Verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. He blessed many people, benefited many people. You know why? Because he wanted to profit them. And he made up his mind, even when he felt tired, he would still give them the best. And when any of us might feel tired, you'll still get the best. I will get the best. I will give the best. As you give the best, this year, you also get the best in Jesus' name. 
I'm reading from First Corinthians chapter 7. First Corinthians chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 35. And this I speak for your own profit. Anything we preach, salvation, repentance, restitution, holiness without which no man shall say the Lord, watching and praying, being ready until the coming of the Lord is for your profit. And we must make sure that anything we tell the church of God, anything we minister church, to the church of God, this I speak for your own profit. Not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. You will not distract people. Those who are to be saved, you will not distract them. I said those who are to be saved, you will not distract them. You allow them to concentrate on the word that will bring eternal life unto them. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 33. Chapter 10, verse 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. You're not seeking your own profit. You're not trying to control this and control that because that will make you happy. That will make you know that you are in charge of everything and everybody. But you want to minister for the profit, not of yourself, the profit of many that they may be saved. It may be your action that will save somebody. It may be your action that will convict somebody of sin. It may be your presentation that will make somebody come out of sin, come out of darkness, and come into the light. That's profitable. And this year, every time, everywhere, you want to consecrate your overall profitability for the salvation of souls, for the sake of of the returning Christ. Acts, uh, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with the, whatever gifts of the Spirit we have, Whatever ability we have, we want to make use of that so that there will be profit. Your profit will benefit people. I will benefit people. I will profit people. You don't just go through the motions of the service without being of tremendous benefit to somebody. We're looking at First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 8. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. That we keep our godliness, we keep our sanctification, we keep our holiness, we keep our righteousness. That is profitable in all things, having the promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Verse 15, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly, completely, unreservedly, entirely unto them, that thy profiting may appear to all. That you are benefiting the church, you are profiting the church, you are benefiting the house fellowship, you are benefiting the zone, you are benefiting, you are profiting, the district and the group, you are profiting, your community, bringing them to the Lord, revival coming up because of your contribution. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly, entirely, completely, absolutely to them, that Thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto yourselves and unto the doctrine. 
Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Them that hear thee. And then when the Lord shall come. My brother, you'll be ready. My sister, you'll be ready. Our visitors, you'll be ready. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him, the returning Christ, as your minister, he may come today. This may be your last chance. Do it well. As you pray, do it well. As you touch the lives of other people, do it well. As you encourage other people, do it well. Don't discourage anyone. That when he comes, when he shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation, you'll be ready and you'll make other people ready as well. Amen. Revelation chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. He said that before, it's sooner now than it was 2,000 years ago. And now he says, behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Is coming back with your reward. Is coming back with your crown. Is coming back with your stars. Is coming back with the title deed of the house he has prepared for you. You will not miss it. I said you will not miss it. And all through this life between now 2020 and the time he will come for you, there will be blessing upon your life. And any time he comes, don't let him find you sluggish. Don't let him find you unhappy. Don't let him find you depressed. Don't let him find you lazy and idle. Remember, he's coming and he's bringing you something from heaven. Do what you do excitedly. And do what you do with interest and cheerfulness. And let zeal and passion and joy and cheerfulness be in the rendering of your service in Jesus' name. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give how many people? To give, I said how many people? To give, I said how many people? Every man, thank God I'm going to receive a reward. To give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to enter. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. When it's, re when it's your time to re ready to go, angels will be waiting for you. The porter will be waiting at the gate to open the door for you. You will enter. I will enter. Ah, but look at verse 15. But without a dogs and sorcerers and all mongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I am not on that list. I said I'm not on that list. I remember when we were in school, and a principal would come to the assembly. Some people were to be expelled. Some people were to be expunged, driven away from the school. And the principal will be so serious. And then he says, and this is this uh, special assembly. We've done the morning assembly. All of a sudden, they make announcements in all the classes that we should go to the assembly hall. And we'll get there. And then the principal comes. He has paper in his hand. 
And he said, now everybody today is serious. We're sorry. We have to expel some of you. Because we've been following your activities. And then he begins to read the list. Number one, come out here. Number two, come out here. And then I'm saying in my heart, I hope I'm not on his list. And then he finished reading the list. Lo and behold, they didn't mention my name. I was not expelled. I stayed there and I finished well. And the Lord is saying, is going to call a general assembly. He has a list in the sand. And he'll be calling them, sorcerer, come over here. Dogs, come over here. Murderers, come over here. Adulterers, come over here. Fornicators, come over here. All mongers, come over here. Idolaters, come over here. Liars, come over here. On and on. And when God has finished the list, I will not be there. But among those who are going to heaven, among those who are going to make it on that final day, saved, sanctified, holy, pure, righteous, to enter into heaven, thank God, my name is in the book of life. And I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bride and the morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. It's not too late yet. You can be saved today if you have not been saved. And let him that here is say, come. And let him that the thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. It's available. I said it's available. I said it's available. Why don't you rise up? Ask yourself, am I ready? If it should come today, Am I ready? Call upon the Lord. Remember, remember, He wants you to present your body as a living sacrifice. Your soul, living sacrifice. Your spirit, living sacrifice. Your heart, living sacrifice. Your mind, living sacrifice. Your hands, your feet, your ears, your eyes, your mouth, your tongue, all your members. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. I beseech you that you present yourself. Let him hear you pray. Present yourself to the Lord. Give yourself to the Lord. Unreservedly, that tongue, hand it over to the Lord. That mouth, hand it over to the Lord. Those eyes, hand them over to the Lord. Your ears, what you hear. And your ears over to the Lord. Whatever story anybody is going to tell you. That you cannot proclaim, preach, publicize. On house tops. Those things are not for your ears. Your hands present unto the Lord. Whatever you do with those hands will be something acceptable unto the Lord. No crime, no transgression, 
no evil, no violence in your hand, no shedding of blood, no writing or typing anything dirty. Hands clean, surrendered unto the Lord. Feet circumspect, not walking to places where you'll defile yourself. Surrender those feet unto the Lord. And walk in the way of righteousness. And walk in purity. You'll be of purer eyes than to behold in equity. Of purer eyes than to behold pollution. Consecrate your tongue to the Lord. This new year, pure language, clean language, A defying language. Crucify the old pride. Old pride. If they don't take what I say, then I will hurt myself. They don't want me so I kill myself, old pride, crucify that. Crucify the old pride of Uzziah. Try to intrude into the service of the Lord, leaving your own post of duty and intruding into what others are supposed to do. Pride, get rid of that this year. Pride of position, get rid of that. Pride of possession, get rid of that. Pride of the old man, get rid of that. Pride of Lucifer. I, I, I will exalt myself above the throne of God. Get rid of that. Pride of a hardened heart. Get rid of that. Pride of incorrigibility. They know I never listen to anybody. They know I never listen to the Bible. They know I never listen to preaching. Pride of incorrigibility. Get rid of that. Crucifying the old pride and recurring crisis. Pride of rejecting the work of God is too small. 
give this to others who are they giving this to me? I don't want it. I won't do it. The pride of belittling the work of God. Just what I want. That's what I want. If I don't have what I want, I won't serve God. Take rid, get rid of that pride this year. Crucifying the old pride in recurring crisis. Crisis that came before, you reacted in pride. That crisis comes again, you are reacting in pride. Get rid of that old pride. It doesn't pay. In the sight of God, does not bring blessing for the new year. Crucify the old pride. Be humble. Humble. Lowly. Meek. Don't destroy yourself with pride. Don't waste your life with pride. Crucify it. The pride killed Absalom. Crucify it. The pride turned Nebuchadnezzar to an animal. Crucify it. The pride destroyed Belshazzar. Weighed and found wanting. Crucify it. The pride destroyed a heath to fail. Crucify it. Brought Lucifer down. Crucify it. Crucifying the old pride in a recurring crisis. Consecrate your profitability for the returning Christ. Whatever you can do to be a prophet to sinners, soft in their heart, convict them of their sin, turn to the Lord, get saved, do it, be profitable. Whatever you can do, to encourage those who are discouraged. Profitable to those who are discouraged. Lifting up those who are down. Whatever you can do to be a prophet to the members of the church, do it. Be a prophet. In preaching, be a prophet. In counseling, be a prophet. In leading our fellowship, be a prophet. In helping the helpless, be a prophet. Make sure that everything you do is to serve profitably. Lord is coming. He wants you to be profitable. And let your profiting appear unto all.
that he meets you serving? Let him meet you happy to serve the people of God. Serving, not grudgingly, happily, cheerfully, excitedly. And those who are coming for the first time, come along with us. For the Lord has promised to do us good. And whatever goodness we have, we'll share with you. Your life will be profitable. Come along with us. The Lord will do you good. Brother, sister, don't stay back, don't hold back this year. Come along with us in all the meetings, in all the retreats, in all the conferences, and the Lord will do you good. In Jesus' name we pray. 2020 congregation. 2020 congregation. I said in Jesus' name we pray. This year we'll serve the Lord. With all our strength, with our body, with our mind, with our soul, with our hands, with our feet, with our eyes, with our ears, everything we have is going to be kept pure, kept holy, kept sanctified, and we will serve the Lord unreservedly in Jesus' name. His promises will be amen and yes in our lives. The prophecies will be yes and amen in our lives. That 2020 achievement we're going to have in Jesus' name. My hands are anointed. Where are those hands? My hands are anointed. My ears are anointed. My eyes are anointed. And your life is anointed. The Lord will bless you this year beyond your greatest prayer. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. we bless your name for the first Sunday of this year 2020. You have promised us good things. We are going to have good things. Yeah. We are going to have great things. Yeah. We are going to have great wonders. Every day, goodness and mercy will follow us in Jesus' name. We we'll believe in the Lord our God. We we'll believe in His prophet. We will be established. We will be prospered. And everything will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Powers of darkness are cancelled. And all the conspirators in, in, in darkness, they are crushed and they are scattered in Jesus' name. The way before everyone is clear and open. No mountain will stand before you. No man of the world will stand before you. No woman of the world will stand before you. No agent of Satan will stand before you. As we're walking, you're walking in faith. As we talk, you're talking in faith. As we pray, you're praying in faith. As we serve, you're serving in faith. 
you will be a prophet to this generation. Your life will not be a wasted life. Your skill will not be a wasted skill. You will be a prophet to your wife. A prophet to your husband. A prophet to your parents. A prophet to your children. A prophet to your entire family. They will see you and praise God for you. You'll be a prophet to the church of the living God. The church will see you and praise God for you. And as you bless members of the church and you bless ministers of the church and you bless the whole church, multitudes will bless your back. You sow just one, you will reap a hundred. From all directions, blessings will come your way in Jesus' name. Every day of this year, you will remember you are living in 2020 accomplishment. You are living in 2020 blessing. Nothing will shift you from where God has planted you. And then as you offer your body, your heart, your mind, your feet, your hands, your ears, your eyes, all your members unto the Lord, your offering, your service will be acceptable unto the Lord. And heaven will smile on you. And every prayer you pray, God will answer. While you are yet praying, the Lord will answer. And before you say the final amen, answer will come in Jesus' name. This year, the bad waters of the past year has gone under the bridge, is gone. Bad experiences of past years, they've gone under the bridge, they are gone. Sicknesses of past years, they are gone. Oppression of past years, they are gone. You have crossed over. Unto sunshine, you have crossed over. Unto joy, you have crossed over. Unto fulfillment, you have crossed over. Unto prosperity, you have turned cross over. Unto the abundance that will never be exhausted, you have crossed over. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the brighter side of your life in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm it in every life. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.